Today's lesson is on limiting reagents. And to start off with, I want to use a bit of an analogy. Suppose you're manufacturing grilled cheese sandwiches. And at your disposal, we have eight slices of bread and three slices of cheese. And the question is, how many grilled cheese could you make? One approach to this problem is to consider, first of all, just the bread by itself. With eight slices of bread, it should be possible to make four grilled cheese. That's case number one. In the second case, we'll consider just the cheese. With three slices of cheese, we should only be able to make three grilled cheese. That would then be case number two. Well, how many grilled cheese do you make then? Well, you would only be capable of making the three grilled cheese sandwiches. That's generally the rule. You can only make the smaller of the two amounts. So we would identify in this case the substance that limited how much product we could make was the cheese, the limiting chemical, and the bread would be considered the excess reagent. We're going to use this approach when we look at a chemical example. We're going to consider two scenarios, or three scenarios, depending on how many reactants we have. And the one that produces the smallest amount of product is my limiting chemical. So here we're going to look at a reaction between hydrogen and oxygen to make water. So let's start off by taking a look at scenario number one, and I'll do that with green. So I have here five grams of oxygen. I'm sorry, five grams of hydrogen. Now, from that five grams, I'm going to convert that information into moles by dividing by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 2.02 grams per mole. When I do that, I arrive at my number of moles of hydrogen, which would be 2.48 moles. So how much product, in this case water, could I make from that? Well, the ratio between them is 2 to 2, and so I'd make exactly the same. So that's case number one, using hydrogen as a, the limiting chemical to determine how much product I would make. Now I'm going to repeat this calculation by looking at the oxygen. I have 10 grams of oxygen. I'm going to take that and convert it into moles by dividing by the molar mass of O2, which is 32 grams per mole. That division gives me 0.313 moles. Now the ratio that exists between oxygen and my water, the ratio is 1 to 2. So I could make 0 0.626 moles. This is the smaller of my amounts. That allows me then to say that this is my limiting chemical. And the hydrogen, my excess chemical. In order to determine the amount of product I'm going to make, I must always use my limiting chemical. So I'm going to use that information and the molar mass of water and multiply the 0.626 by our molar mass of water. And I arrive at 11.3 grams of water. In a follow-up question, I would like to determine how much of my hydrogen is left over. And I'm going to do this by two approaches. But anyway, let's use the first approach, which will work in all scenarios. This is how much hydrogen I've been given. And I already know that's more than enough. In fact, it's too much. How much hydrogen do I actually need 
in this experiment? Well, I can go over here to my amount of product that I made, and I'm going to use that information to come back all the way over here. So I'm going to go from my water back to my hydrogen, and the ratio between these is 2 to 2, or 1 to 1. So I'm going to need 0. Point, let's say that's 6.3 moles. So the amount that's left over, I subtract. I take what I've given minus what I need, and that should give me then roughly an idea of how much extra I have, which turns out to be 1.85 moles of extra hydrogen. If I want to take that and turn that information into grams, I would then have to take that and multiply it by the molar mass of hydrogen, 2.02, and that would give me the grams that would be left over, which would be 3.7 grams. So that's how much extra hydrogen I would have that would remain unreacted. But I want to show you another approach that could be used here for an idea in earlier science courses is called the law of conservation of mass. If I look at the mass of my reactants in this case, the hydrogen and the oxygen together, I had 5 grams of hydrogen, I had 10 grams so that total mass then gives me 15 grams. Now the mass of my products right now, which is just, just the water, which is 11.3, but we've already said there's going to be some unused excess chemical left over. That total must be 15. That then allows me then to figure out, so I have 15, must equal 11.3 plus my unused leftover excess chemical. And I get that unused excess chemical as being 3.7 grams. So both approaches work. The reason this one works very nicely is because essentially we had one product. If we had more than one product, we would need to include their masses before we could solve by this approach. So both approaches will get you to the right answer. Um, I might suggest if you just have one product, this approach might be the fastest way to get your solution. If you've got several products to worry about, then perhaps you may want to use this approach here. Anyway, the next time perhaps you're, you're making lunch, and you go and reach for the ham to make a sandwich, remember, you haven't run out of it. Ham is just the limiting reagent.